and then they're going to want to try to utilize that with Phoenix Egg and some team fights and try to take it from there. Okay, well, let's see as we get ourselves into this game what exactly comes out in terms of lanes. And well, game five here between Navi and VP. What a game it's going to be. In the, oh, the crowd's excited. I can hear them already. And uh, well, do we have any VP fans in the house? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Um, any Navi fans? Oh, oh, that's a big roll. Oh, that, oh, that guy looks. Oh, it's Toby. Good, good to see you <laughs> turned up. Right, let's get ourselves into the game. Navi versus VP begins. I'm being handed a can of monster. This is fantastic because I'm going to need it for this game. We're going to see a lot of action. And, uh, well, Trasco, you don't want the second one, I'll take it. Here we go, Na'Vi versus VP. Into the lanes we go. It is, by the looks of it, going to be two sets of defensive tri lanes. And, well, let's see if we see any kind of early aggression kicking off as both teams heading towards these runes here at the moment. What's the plan here? VP looking for the top one. Na'Vi going to look for the bottom. It doesn't look like we're going to see anything kick off straight away. But as you're saying, now we know the two drafts. What is the game plan for both sides? Navi is going to be looking for non-stop aggression once they get their blinks up. It's going to be integral for their lineup. Funnick, he has the same kind of position that he did last game where he can go into the lane, soak some EXP. The zoning heroes right now of Bane and Winter Wyvern, like, they can do a little bit, but they're probably not going to be able to kill him ever, even with the use of the... Uh, of the Century Ward, and despite your best effort, everybody knows you just opened a monster. Oh, and it's fine. You don't have to be shy about it. <sighs> there you go. But I do think that he'll be able to get his Blink Dagger timing. It's not going to be an issue for him. I'm just wondering what can Phobos the actually accomplish here in this offlane? Because if you do get disrupted or you get fissured during your dive, you can potentially give away a kill here. I think it's more dangerous for Phobos potentially than it could be for Funnick in this game. Let's see how this one pans out. And in terms of our position, what's the fact you've got this gyrocopter? In terms of running the Centaur in the position, when you're not going to want to take this one late if you're BP, surely. I guess that the Vore's got the Shadow Fiend, and we've seen the SF actually come out on top in the latter portions against the position one gyro, but I, I guess that both sides have got the merits towards the late game. I think Na'Vi have a very spread damage style of composition. Like, you have Puck, Shaker, Sand King, Gyro. No one really has high single target damage, which I feel makes a position one Centaur a little bit better. Oh, Fish is going to get thrown down. Won't catch Jin. It's not going to trap him either. Lil's maybe going to look for a bit of a counter initiation. Coming in here with the Arctic Burn, chasing down Dendi. And it's not going to be enough to bring him down. Dendi will be able to keep himself safe. But we are going to see kind of this classic of uh, the supports from either side hanging around the mid lane, trying to secure the lane for uh, G and Dendi, respectively. Yeah, but as we were speaking about the different compositions and at what point in the game they're going to be strong, uh, Navi are going to feel amazing when they get their blink daggers before BKBs come out on the side of VP. Uh, Phoenix, I think, is actually a really solid pick against what Navi have because the only BKB rushing hero on the team is going to be Gyrocopter, and that means you're going to deal a ton of damage and killing the eggs is going to be tough. Oh, Seneco straight him. in. Can they stop the dive, though? He's got it available and oh, going straight in with the disruption there before the dive was cast does allow Phobos to still get himself out of that one. So another unfortunate little bit of a movement there from Na'Vi. Oh, they're applying some pressure to him at least. You don't want him to get levels. That's the, the worst thing. And lucky right now for Na'Vi, they're doing a nice job of controlling the safe lane. There's three range creeps on the side of BP, so the lane will continue to push out. Bottom lane. Going yes. in on Phobos. He doesn't have the dive. They've got Soul Catcher as well. Snake are going to move in. They're going to need a few punches to bring him low. They're getting him low. The right clicks as well from the Illusion, helping out for Shadow Demon. He pops us out. There's not going to be enough. Snake goes in. We'll find first blood there onto the Phoenix. Did he actually just stop to click salve on himself? Oh, Lil, he wants a bit of return action, looking for Suneko, and he should be able to find this one. Suneko trying to juke it out, won't be enough, and VP do find the return kill there. That was a really awkward pause. I actually don't think the Phoenix should have ended up dying there. Even though Shaker is a very fast hero, he actually like paused and then salved and then walked forward. It was a very short stutter, but it was definitely there. In the meantime, Hastern picked up here by FNG. Looking yeah. for something. Going towards the mid lane. He has got the Wyvern coming in as one. Well. Dandy's incredibly low. They're going to set this one up with a Nightmare. G moving forward. He's got level two racing for the fish. coming back. Holding G back. Dandy's still alive. He face shifts all out. And now trying to turn this one around. Suneko getting G low. But Lil is, of course, there with the embrace. Keeps G up. G will find the final raise onto Dendi on the sidelines. And it is VP coming out on top of that mid lane engagement. That was so unlucky for Dendi. He actually orbed to the only possible place where that fissure would have actually made him unable to path anywhere else. He couldn't move. So even though going to the orb itself was pretty much the only way he was going to live, still ended up killing him. A little bit unfortunate there that the vision from Suneko ends up getting him killed. But very nice for VP to get themselves up on the board again. This is, to me, maybe the closest draft of any of the games so far in the series, which I feel is appropriate considering mm -hmm. it's the fifth game. So Lane, Illidan here with a hoost on double edge. Funnick, he's going to have to run. He's only level one and caught the sandstorm, but the hell, oh, the sentry's going to be dropped and Illidan finding the kill there. More money into the pocket of this sensor. And that Blink Dagger is going to be coming out pretty early if Illidan keeps up this level of farm. 
the nice thing too about uh, VP's lineup currently is, as we talked about again, it's a lot of spread damage. So once G and Illidan start to tank up a bit, those heroes are actually very good at just bursting down somebody straight away. So the Shadow Fiend can go back for things like Daedalus in the Ultra Late game. You're also going to have Winter's Curse to deal some pretty good physical damage depending on who you throw it on. I think that if anything, Navi are going to have great mid game. Fissure. He's, he's got, got dive. dive. He's got yeah. the dive. He's good. He's good. He's golden. Yeah, he's but Navi's mid game is fantastic. I think VP actually might be a tiny bit favored for late game, though. Okay. It's okay. really hard to say because a lot of it just boils down to who gets the better engagements, right? Like who takes the better fights, who gets the big echo in this case, if uh, Saneko can do it. He's done it in the past, in, even in this series. We're seeing this again from Funk. He's looking to rotate towards the mid lane here as this Sand King. But, I mean, at level 2, with just one point in Burrow Strike, it's a very hard gank to make happen. It is night time, so he's going to be able to get close and personal. But, uh, well, at the same time, the side of VP, they've got plans of their own in terms of rotations. Lil here in the jungle, Saneko. He's going to chase this one down. It was spotted out by this Warden. He's got the Arctic Burn. He should be able to fly through and fly away from here. But still, Lil, playing a bit, playing a bit in a bit of a dangerous position here on the side of Radiant. He wasn't spotted, though, which is a good thing, which means they're not going to know that camp's Warded until they try to stack it again. And there's, like, Sun Echo's clueless right now. Oh, he's going to walk into him. Okay, now he knows at least he's there. But he probably doesn't know that the camp is warded, which is still nice. I Good block. He's, he's figured that the, uh, the Arctic Man, of course, isn't available. So Lil's going to be stuck for a bit. But as you said, it is just Sun Echo here trading punches. And, and Lil will be simply able to walk away from that one. Denny was moving in as well, seeing if they could find a fight. Top lane, there's going to be the Burrow Strike on Dillerton. But, well, Funny's going to be careful. The Nightmare coming out. And they might try and turn this. It's only level, what, level 2 Funny. And D's going to get blown up straight away by the Who Storm double edge combination. Dendi coming in with the rotation. So he wants to try and find a return kill. But being held back there, he won't be able to follow through the orb. And, well, even though Denny comes up in, not able to find any kind of return action favoring the side of Na'Vi. And VP, yet again, finding themselves another kill. 4-4-1 four, four, at the moment in the laning stage. And in terms of CS as well, slightly favoring VP also. Not even just slightly, a lot. And Dendi just transitioned to top to try to get a kill. G's left to his own devices in middle lane, leading the CS, 33-15. and 15. Dendi's only got 19 creep kills right now, which is a pretty standard thing to happen in a Shadow Fiend versus Puck matchup. If for whatever reason you end up getting picked in that 1v1, the Shadow Fiend just auto wins the lane, unless you have outside help. And right now, Funnik can't really help him, because as you already mentioned, he was very low level, just at level 3 a couple of seconds ago. And the Shaker doesn't really do enough damage on his own. So VP have been very proactive about punishing this mid matchup and giving G the position that he wants to play from, which is being very far ahead, because he's great at bullying when he knows he has the advantage. Indeed, well, G's going to be happy, continues to farm there, top lane, funny, so to be careful, they're moving in, he is now level 6 as well, so of course they do have this stampede initiation, if needed, and at the same time he's going to make these rotations harder for the side, Navi, but Navi, they will find Phobos there, following up with the Rocket Barrage damage there, on the bottom lane. Uh, that's a big kill. You really want to get Havos as farmed as humanly possible in this game. Because of the fact that two lanes are, are losing, not super hard, but they're definitely not winning for the side of Na'Vi. Like your top lane, your middle lane, they are struggling at this point. You need to have something good going for you. And outside of the fact that Funnik managed to get level 2 Sandstorm, which will allow him to start farming the woods, that's a big thing for Na'Vi. Funnik's Blink Dagger in the previous match solidified them the mid-game win, in my opinion. Just like single-handedly with like massive furrows, good epicenters, all that kind of carried them very easily into the late game and eventually just toppled over Virtus Pro. I think his Blink Dagger timing is going to be just as important, if not even more important, because they actually need it this game. Whereas last game, I felt like their draft was just superior. Well, last hit wise, and you were saying it earlier, Shadow Fiend looking pretty scary. It's going to only continue that way. Top of the net worth board at the moment. G clearing out these jungle camps as well. Looking very, very good for the Shadow Fiend. That's going to give the space as well for Wyvern in the mid lane to work his way towards that level 6. Now, right now, it's pretty quiet. I think both teams are just content to sit back and do their own thing. Now, G, I'm not sure if he's going to opt to go for the mech build this game. I think mech is actually very good against the team that's almost solely comprised of spread damage. Like we've brought that point up a few times so far, but I think it is important to keep people remembering that this Navi lineup is built around fighting five versus five, not about killing like very farm single target heroes. Top lane, they really want to go for it. They're going to send any up as well. They'll set this one up here with the disruption cooldown. Fisher, everything coming nice. down and the, oh, the stampede is not going to save him. And Navi there with the rotation, taking down the Sentinel. That's four heroes though, man. You just sent four heroes to the top lane to kill one, and now you're going to have a couple of heroes getting some solo experience. That leaves Phobos safe in the off lane. That leaves Lil safe mid. You're still making a trade, even if you kill that hero. So keeping him away from the Blink Dagger, I think that's still a good call. And in fact, 
It's very common for Illidan to do this on a lot of heroes, by the way. He buys a casual ring of health. Now, I'm not sure if he's going back for the Vanguard, but I really hope he's not. I think that Blink Dagger is way too important to kind of skip over this game. Bottom lane, VP moving in onto the tier one at the same time. Navi applying a pressure to the top. They wanted to find something else on top of the kill that they got onto Illidan. And it looks like they might just do that here, bringing down this tier one on the top lane. A bit more gold for Vost as well if he's able to get that final touch in. Fortification coming out from the ring. The question is, do Navi try and defend this bottom lane? So Nako's there on his own, and now with the Nightmare, he's going to be in a bit of trouble. He needs some help if he's going to wish to stay alive, and well, nothing's going to come. They're just going to let Soneko go there as he falls on the Earthshaker. I think it's fine. In the grand scheme of things, Navi killed the tier 1 first, and they ended up killing a carry, whereas VP were only able to find a support. So, he's going to exchange towers at the end of the day. It's not too bad for Navi at this point. Their blink timings are so, so important, and Funnick has been left alone this whole time. We talked about how a few minutes ago he was level 3. Now he's halfway to level 7, pretty much, after this creep wave. And look at his gold as well. I mean, coming up to 1700, it's still going to be a very respectable timing on his blink dagger if he doesn't die. Yeah, and it's super important for them, too. If they can get some momentum going off that blink, then you can also get Dendi his his blink, too, which he's even farther away than Funnick, given the fact that he did get ganked in that middle lane, and then his first teleport rotation, he did it prior to being level 6, so he wasn't even able to punish Illidan for the kind of sort of dive they did on that tier 1 top lane, so I think this is going to be the, the go button for Navi once Funnick has that item up, and they're even prioritizing the Sonic Shaker getting level 6 too, so they will have a lot of tools available to them very soon to start turning this game in their favor. Ooh, uh, it should be fine, it's just Phobos coming in, he's got nothing to control the puck, and Puck's able to get himself away safely. G coming in in terms of his farm closing towards that uh, good old mechanism, he's very close to it. Just a recipe short, so it's going to be a very, very quick timing for him as well. But a voice, well, maybe not if a voice can chase this one down. Now, nah, G's got a haste read. He's fine. We'll be able to get himself out. I guess he baited out the rocket barrage. No, but I mean, that was just him looking for something. He had a high ground ward inside of the jungle, so maybe he was looking to see if he could line up a razor too. He might have been able to kill Havost if he had been on point and the rest of EP coming in. Smoking up, they're gonna stampede for us. Straight away the Fiend's grip onto Seneco. If they find it, they'll certainly find the Earthshaker kill. The question is, can they get anything else here? Looks like the rest of Na'Vi have got themselves out and let's have a look at Funnick. Has he got that blink? Nah, he's gonna get it now. Moves into the side shot, will be able to pick up the blink dagger and uh, consequently hide himself in the trees, so. And it's just an Earthshaker they stake down, and the fact that Funnick isn't stopped on what is a, a road to a very quick blink. 11 minutes in, we can start to expect to see Na'Vi looking for the plays now. Very interesting to me that Ilden actually goes back for the Vanguard. Like, he actually completes the Vanguard. Now, I know it makes you extremely tanky, and Na'Vi's team, most of their damage output is magic right now. And with the mech and the Vanguard, you're kind of unkillable, and maybe they're just saying Stampede is enough of an initiation tool right now, and they don't actually need the blink to make sure they can take fights. It's just a very interesting concept. Like, maybe he even foregoes it completely and goes back for pipe. I feel that item is ridiculous against Navi's team. Like, 10% extra magic resistance and the 400 absorb would be huge against this epicenter, the oncoming uh, Earthshaker ultimate that's going to be soon, hopefully. I think he's like 25 experience away from 6, yeah. So Neko will be able to have that, and you have call down. Like, everything on the side of Navi is magic right now. And top lane as well, Dendi trying to just find some pump. 1700 gold towards his own blink dagger. And he has got the backup now. Jaro, they're going to go for this one. Dropping the dream call straight away. The cold embrace will be there to buy a little sometime, but it's not going to be enough to protect him against the amount of damage that Na'Vi have as they do find the Cleanser Wife and FNG TPing in as well as the Phoenix diving forward here. Obos, of course, does have... No, he's not quite got the mana, in fact, for Supernova, so they wouldn't have been able to do anything anyway. And Na'Vi are able to back themselves out and get away with taking that kill for them. The more and more I see how VP are playing this, I kind of have this sense of they want to actually just try to out-tank Navi's lineup. Like, having Stampede as a disengage tool is fantastic, but Puck kind of... He doesn't counter it, but it's annoying. Because if you get coiled and you Stampede, you actually can't run anywhere unless you have BKBs up. But we actually know for a fact that G is going to be making his way towards BKB soon. Maybe he just buys it after the mech. Maybe he waits uh, one other item in his progression. And Illidan will likely pick one up at some point too. And in that case, the Stampede becomes very useful again. But until that point, it's going to be anyone's game. Just comes down to the fights. Dendi's now got the blink dagger on the puck. Yeah. So uh, in terms of initiation with that and the Sankey in house, and they could think, well, he's got 800 gold. So he's working towards it. Still quite a way to go. VP are looking for Roshan here. They brought it down to half health. And the question is if Na'Vi know about this or want to try and contest it. And uh, does not like have any intention of closing in on this soon. So VP should be able to get away with this. Now this is a big thing for them too. 
just being able to get it off the map. I mean, Navi's team's not really great at killing Roshan, if we're just being honest. And maybe part of the Vanguard choice was to be able to tank it up like Illidan is right now. He didn't take much, if any, damage, really, from tanking that. But very nice to get G with an Aegis at this early stage in the game. I think it makes it much less likely that Navi are going to be able to take a team fight in general, even with the use of the Blink, unless Funix Epi is so good that he just kills, like, two or three heroes in the back. VP, they want to make the most of this stage. They want to start to get the push on at Heartstar. And they can lead in with this one. Disruption. And now Snake Oak throwing out the Fisher. Not going to catch anyone. It's within the Wars Plus. Now with the Stampede, there's going to be the Fiend Script onto a Vos. They want to bring down this Jaro, but oh, the next one's going to catch him. And Funny catching out the Epicenter onto Lil and G. Not falling out on the side of Navi. Now the call out from a Vos. Who catch loads of them as in the middle of it. They lose Dendi here on the puck. And Phobos going forward. He does have that Supernova. The Fisher. All on about with the timing, but the burn damage bringing out something incredibly low. He might dodge this. He will do indeed. This is a fair attack. Fantastic fight for VP, finding two and losing nothing, and they should be able to get the tier one off the back of this as well. That Sand King Epi didn't really do a whole heck of a lot in that fight, and that is really bad for Navi. They're going to lose their tier one for sure, as you mentioned. And the first time uh, the Blink has been shown in a team fight, it doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. And that, I mean, the mech was uh, popped, of course, but there was no pipe coming out from the side of VP, and that, again, was the, without Illidan even having a Blink, like he just casually walked in. And that's against a Sand King and a Shaker and a. Uh, Shadow Demon. So he got into that fight somehow, managed to catch a Havos, forced like two or three members of Navi back. The Epi wasn't really on point, and then all of a sudden they just lose that team fight pretty badly, I would say. And G is now making his way towards that BKB, which, unlike in that last game, or not the last game, it was the third game where they had Ancient Apparition and Rubik, VP had this sense of once BKBs come out, their team becomes significantly weaker. I would say it's the same for Navi in this game. Their supports are entirely based around magic damage, even their offlaner in the Sand King and Puck. So they have this kind of AoE magic damage wombo combo draft that eventually will fall off very, very hard. And BP are also still winning in the early mid game pretty heavily. Dyer's like their Shadow Fiend is a beast in terms of farm right now. Uh, Illidan, he's getting close to blink if he opts to go for it. If he wants to go pipe, I actually think that's fine too because it just lets you run into towers, which if they can get map control, they can just keep killing Roshan and kind of smother Navi. I mean, as you said, yeah, he's, he's got that option of the fact that he's still able to contribute a lot to the fight, even without the blink. We found him finding himself in position very nicely, Illidan, in that fight around the mid-tier one. And, I mean, the question is, is Na'Vi, do you kind of just wait for them to go on you again and look to jump on them, or do you yourself need to smoke up and start to go a bit more aggressive than they have been? You can definitely go for picks with Na'Vi's lineup. There's no question about that. Like, you have Blink Sand King, that opens up enough for you. You have Blink Coil. You can just jump in and try to find anything, really. I think you could probably kill almost every single hero, except for the Shadow Fiend may be too risky to commit to. You'd have to have full vision if you were going to smoke and try to kill him, but everyone else I think you could probably kill. And the Centaur, of course, too, is super tanky. So, three heroes out of five. G and Lil are smoked up, They're moving towards the mid, but it is just the two of them. And Na'Vi themselves, they're grouped up as a five-man. It's a little bit too hard for the side of Epi to fight in with just the two of them. Still. Uh, Na'Vi need time. They need to get the Shaker to blink too, I think. That's maybe the most important one. Because of the fact that BKBs are going to be coming out soon on BP, they need an immediate lockdown outside of just the Burrow, so they can make sure that Epi actually deals damage. Ooh, here comes the second smoke from VP. This time they might be able to find something with it as they bring the whole entire team down the mid lane. FNG looking to lead in, has got that Fiend's grip. If he can catch out her horse, that's going to be massive. It's a stampeding forward, oh looks for the Who Stomp. Isn't quite able to find it, and Na'Vi. Lucky to not lose anyone there as VP can't just quite catch the stun onto him. You can tell VP know they're very far ahead. Like at this stage in the game, their team fight is insane. Even with the Sand King blink and having call down and the blink puck, they're still the ones forcing the advantage. And I would say that playing Reckless into a lineup with the puck and a Sand King, both having blink, is probably the best case scenario for Navi because it allows you to counterplay and set up really big ults as opposed to just trying to go for a gank and ult like one or two people and then try to pick and then run. But still, Navi not feeling as confident, maybe, to take those fights. They also kind of need their gyrocopter to get BKB. But I think Pavost is actually going back for S and Y, it looks like right now. Which means the Bane can Fiend Scrip him and deal damage. The Phoenix is still going to be a huge nuisance. They're not going to be able to kill the Egg because nobody on the side of Navi can deal with it. If he lands the Fire Spirits, it's just free Supernova, no matter what. And the other thing, too, is they actually have a great team built around the Egg because you have Requiem. And once G gets his own BKB, he can just stand there and Requiem around the egg, and then what are you supposed to do? Like, 
You actually Radiant's just have to run. And then we are seeing the Blink Dagger picked up fallen. on your Earthshaker now. So this is going to be Dagger another big addition to the team fight. Na'Vi, Havorst, and Bunnik just pushing down this bottom lane, but a lot of TP's coming in. FNG trying to get himself in range for a Nightmare or a Grip, and well, they're going to find Havorst here. Zillage and Blink straight in. They blow up the Gyrocopter, and now Bunnik trying to get himself out with so many Burrow Strike and TP away. But Havorst there just getting caught out by VP. And Na'Vi need it. They need BKB on the Gyrocopter like 100%. Just showcase there why he needs it. If he gets Blink initiated on and there's no supports in the vicinity, he's just gone. Like there's no way that he can stand to that kind of damage. The other thing too that's going to start to become more and more of an issue is this Centaur is going to get tankier. He has ridiculous strength gain. He's already up to another 1,000 gold after his Blink and his Vanguard. G is going to pretty much be following suit. He's highest farmer in the game right now. If that keeps happening and they both get BKBs, or maybe even Centaur goes back for a pipe at this point, then you're not going to have the single target damage to kill them. It's going to be very similar to the, the Lycan, where no one could deal with him when Navi picked it. Now it's going to be, you can't deal with a Shadow Fane and you can't deal with a Centaur. This is also the reason why I felt like VP's lineup would just be better in the late game, because four of the five of the members of their team drop like rocks in terms of efficiency against BKBs. A lot of creeps here, and Neko, he has got that extra time, he's going to blink call, find the Fisher, and now with the follow-up burrow strike from Funnick, they might be able to find Lil, no, the defensive nightmare's going to find them some time, and now, turning around onto Vorsky with a curse, with a Fiend Script as well, Jara's getting low, he'll go down there to the Splinter Blast, and his two heroes falling on the side, now V, they are able to take down the egg, now Dendi trying to take this one around with the Dream Call, Funnick with a burrow strike, will get cleared up by Illidan with a Hoost off, FNG trying to do what he can, will stay alive there, Arstar's going to get nightmared up, Illidan moving forward, they're going to look to take down the Shadow demon here as well and they will find that kill there's a double kill for fng four heroes down on navi and vp again they only lose two everyone dying bar the puck on navi what a fight there as uh, virtus pro just proving that they are ahead and they're going to use that to the best of their advantage in these engagements it actually looked like they were going to turn that potentially because as soon as they kill the egg and full boss goes down i was like oh okay they actually can maybe turn this and then all of a sudden you realize oh right we still have the rest of our team you actually only managed to kill an offlaner and one support and the rest of your team is pretty much dead so if dendy hadn't committed to that i would even say that it would have been a more lopsided exchange maybe like the phoenix definitely wouldn't have died because they wouldn't have had enough auto attacks to kill the supernova and vp would have crushed that even harder so i think navi actually got away with a decent fight considering they're very far behind the gold exchange is the big thing because when you're f as far behind as Navi are right now, taking even like two for four or like three for two or something like that, not in your favor of kills, is still benefiting you in terms of golden experience because you know comeback mechanic is a thing. But here comes the rotation once again from BP. Indeed, looking for them. They don't have the curse available to lock him down, but with the stampede, trying to find themselves in a position to take this fight. They're chasing down Dendi here, but Dendi, he's out of vision and he's out of out of finding time. And it's an echo as well. Just able to blink out into the trees. Looks like VP this time won't find anything there. And Navi have to be manning their panic station soon, I think. How far away is that shaker? Okay, he has blink. So this is actually very good for Navi. With the blink dagger, they can force fights on their own terms. Even with the like, I guess, pretty big deficit of golden experience that they have right now. It's only around 5k. This is actually a, a very similar lead to what we saw game number three VP stomping with. This was a, a very, very similar lead. But I would also say that their lineup is better suited to transitioning into the later stages of the game. But with this Navi, they actually have a chance for fights now, which is a really good thing for them. They have triple blink, and they have two very good disables, and a lot of AoE on top of that. All the TP's coming back now. Now we're going to smoke up straight away, but it's going to be dispelled by FNG here with his Glimmer Cape trying to get out his Fiend Script. Won't be there. So Arstar's got the disruption to break it up. And now going in, they might be able to find the FNG there. Will the find FNG here on the bait? And now Danny Big Four, there's your Echo Snap for Seneco. Three heroes dropping as a double kill for Funnick. It'll just try to try and clear against the Who Stop and the double edge onto the Force. They'll bring down Arstar as well. They do find two in return. Seneco's able to get himself out. Dandy and Funnick, but now Funnick with the epic enter onto Phobos. Fisher for Seneco. Dandy goes in. With the waiting rift, it's only in the left to left. He tries to stampede out, but they're controlling him here. Funny should have a burst strike in a minute. The top of the edge, bringing it into low. He finds himself a kill, but he's gonna pay with his life. It's a team wipe as VP hit the decks, and Navi turn up to the fight in full force. Okay, Funnick is a god. Like, he comes in, he burrow strikes into fog to hit two more heroes, just assuming that people would be standing there. Like, what kind of game sense do you actually need to be able to pull off plays like that? That was unbelievable. The fact that they were even able to take a fight that convincingly... Oh, oh straight script. up. He wants to do the Fiend script, but then he says, Nah, get your hands off him. Blink's still there with the Wayne Rift. Gets himself back out with the orb. And FNG won't find anything there today. And oh, Danny says, thanks for the regen, uh, uh, Mr.
Mr. RG. And, well, well, 11 to 16. We're going to see the graph ticking in a bit, and the side of VP will have certainly lost a, a considerable amount of the lead that they had. We talked about the Wombo combo, man. It's there. And if you give the opportunity for Na'Vi between having that Funix Sand King and Seneko on the Shaker, they will find it if you get too far out of position. I just, I'm blown away that even in this position, Na'Vi are able to take these types of fights. And I mean, they're making it a game. Top lane, the boss and Seneca moving in. If they can get the stun onto G before he gets that BKB out, they could go for a kill here. G coming out, they will find the fish now, going in with the rocket barrage. The Enchanter, and they control G, they bring him down. And again, that's a massive kill for Na'Vi, killing the Shadow Fiend, who, I mean, G, top of the net worth, he's been having an amazing game so far. And if Na'Vi are able to find these kills, it's going to hurt VP so much. FNG moving out, there's going to be the wraparound from Na'Vi, moving towards the mid lane. Now, I'll start throwing down this Mario Pleasure, pop down the sentry as well. They've got the vision, but it looks like FNG will be able to get himself out. Another disruption holding him in place as well. They're going to need a plus one if they want to take it down. Here's Seneca with the fish on to FNG. He'll end up pop this stampede and now Funny trying to move with the burst trap. Will pick himself back out realizing that's not the initiation they need. Winter's cut onto a Vos. Arstel starts to hit away at him. A Vos getting low but they're going to have to use their arms to the center holding him back away from Vos. A Vos is going to live trying to get himself out of this one and looks like Na'Vi won't lose anything. A fish being thrown out. Oh, Illidan going forward. He wants Seneca. Funny now with the MPZ on to Lil and that Dendi going forward to join him as well. Waiting rift onto Lil. He's got the glimmer cape. It's not going to be enough. Dendi takes down the Winter Wyvern. Illidan will try TV out, but no, the disruption's there to cancel it. Funnick with the forest drag onto FNG. Rocky Barrage from Avon brings him down and now he's trying to get himself out. Your center onto Zeus, onto the Phoenix, controlling him. Double kill for Dendi. They should be able to fight for us. They try Echo Slam. Now they'll get the Supernova out, but they'll just focus it, right click it. Forest drag onto G, stopping the Requiem. He'll now put the BKB look for the Requiem, but he's lost his entire team. He's the last one alive. And now the question is can Navi go black, uh, back in? They've got a blade. They're going to have the Forest Drag G. Oh, he's going to fight the kill on some funny they're funny going in a little bit too early as the magic immunity was still there but still what a fight again against vp the massive difference in gold and xp swinging in favor of navi and so many things in that fight going absolutely perfectly for navi the way that navi take team fights in these situations is just like mind-blowing they kite out vp so badly with their mass blink daggers we're gonna Snake see a up. rotation here yeah he's Ice going oh Ooh. nice blink away but that team fight just shows that even in these circumstances, when you have heroes with high mobility, you can bait out every single ability from the enemy team and they just come back in. You see the big epi coming in from here, even with the glimmer cape, it's not enough. Lil ends up dropping and they can re-engage as many times as they want. They're abusing the puck mobility, they're abusing the sand king, they just kite it out and eventually VP just gets split up. All these heroes are by themselves. Illidan was alone, FNG was alone and Lil was alone. And at that point, that's where Na'Vi want you to be, because they know with these mass flanks they can find the initiation, and unfortunately right here when they threw out the supernova, there were no fire spirits out, so that egg had no chance of living. And thankfully for Virtus Pro, G ended up living through that engagement and gets at least one counter kill, so I, I didn't want to jinx them by saying they had the same lead as they did before in this position, but right now they're going to be going for Roshan, and uh, no epicenter up just yet on the side of Na'Vi. Okay, never mind, just came up cooldown. So, if Na'Vi realize this is going down, they can contest, but as of right now, it does not seem like they do. Indeed, Echo Slam being the only ultimate that Na'Vi don't have at their disposal, but they're not going to head that way. And uh, Phobos gets, he's going to go for the BKB this game. Has got it complete on the Phoenix, and I mean, was it, was it Phobos who built the BKB the other day when we were casting, we were saying about the fact that it just allows him to ensure that he gets all those fire spirits off before having to pop the supernova? I think it was. Yeah. I think having the BKB against this team is almost necessary, because you have Blink Puck, Blink Earthshaker, Blink Sand King. There's, there's just so much initiation potential that if you don't have BKB, you can't even rely on using Egg at all. So I think it's a very necessary choice coming out from him. Top lane. Well, Wyvern's going to TP in. Winter's Curse onto Dendi, trying to set something up, but Seneco's there with a the backup. Dendi's just going to be able to orb out, and nothing going to be achieved there by that Wyvern. They're going to pop the Stampede okay. as well. They really want to look to fight, but Seneco's already TP'd out from the tree line. Uh, Vorst and Dendi, they're just running away, and, and VP unable to find anything there, and, and the full five-man being forced up to the top lane, which is going to give the space for Funny to get his push on on the bottom lane. The most important thing for VP right now is to remember Dying the lesson that they get from fighting that middle fight is don't get pulled apart by Na'Vi. Because if you take these small skirmishes against Pucks and Sand Kings, you're never going to win. You're not going to be able to catch them. You don't have the amount of lockdown you need on an individual hero basis to be able to secure those kills. You just have to fight five versus five. And Denzi, he's got enough money for Aghanims if he wants to. I wonder if... Oh, he does actually want to go Aghanims here. He already picked up the point booster. I was going to say, I wonder if he goes for Hex instead, but... 
Yeah, his farm has actually gotten completely out of control. Funnick, he's got an epicenter he wants to use. He's jumping in onto Illidan with the Burrow Strike. The Fisher from Seneca on even place now with the Sandstorm. Now Seneca comes in with the Echo Sam. They should be able to find Illidan. No, Illidan turns. Gets the Hoostop out. Now the Supernova, the Mech from G, keeping him alive. They find the kill onto Seneco, and they do manage to keep Illidan alive. Very nice play there from VP, reacting to Na'Vi, looking for a cheeky little pickoff. MVP Fire Spear from DK Phobos just throws it in from downtown, prevents that last hit from coming in, and they get a really easy turnaround kill. So, important pickup here for Virtus Pro. They get the Aghanims up on the Centaur. This is going to do a ton of work against the Sand King Epi, and of course the Echo Slam, assuming that the Centaur isn't actually hit by it. And I think with the way that Virtus Pro are playing it, it's much more likely that the Centaur will already be inside of the fight to be able to pop that Stampede to negate the damage output. And depending on his usage of that skill, I feel like Na'Vi's damage output could just drastically drop off. So it's going to be down to, again, who gets the better initiation, who has the better utilization of their teamfight abilities. We are going to see the BKB is now complete for Force. Force Staff is going to be on its way out to Seneco as well. So a couple of pickups coming out for the side of Na'Vi. In terms of the net worth, we are now back across the zero mark and it is favoring Na'Vi just slightly though. It's close. Illidan blinking forward aggressively here. Wants to get the push, but there's going to be a fish on to Illidan and he could be in a bit of trouble now. There's going to be the missile flying for as well. G is there to back him up. We'll be able to remove the missile from this fight and VP, they've got the rest of the team coming in. So G and Illidan, if they want to stick around and look for more, they're certainly going to be in a position to do so. The rest, well, Lil at least is smoked up. And so is FNG, so Na'Vi, they've got to be careful about jumping into this one, because FNG, and they were there to react. Epicenter's going to be up in 20 seconds, and Funny just continue to push. FNG is looking for that Fiend's grip there, trying to find a Vorse. He's just going to Nightmare up art style. Seneco has got the Echo Slam, he has got the Echo Slam. Illidan's going to go forward, we'll get yours to throw it now. Denny coming in with a Ranger Rift for the Stampede now, they're going to turn it. They take down art style, Havorce has popped the BKP, but he can't fight into this. There'll be the Fisher coming out. But still, Na'Vi not quite ready to jump into this one. Echo Slam will be up in 15 seconds. They do have the epicenter, but... And now Funnick has returned. So maybe with the Echo Slam, if it, they, they can look to try and jump. Just going to try and take this tier two. Dendi's got a dream call as well. Five seconds to the Echo Slam. Do they want to go homing missile onto Willardin? They're trying to force BP back. They've got a full communication by them sometime. And do they chase this one down? Now, it doesn't look like it. They've sent both the Sand King and the Earthshaker to the top lane. And this isn't going to be the fight that Na'Vi looks for. If they were able to make something happen off that, even though Artstyle was dead, I think that they could have potentially done something. I think their biggest worry was the fact that she still had BKB, but Stampede was down. They still had everything else, though. Like, they had Egg, they had Fiend Script, they had all that stuff. So I get why Navi didn't want to go in. I just saw, like, a, maybe a tiny opening if they wanted to try to really, really force it. But I think that also the fact that he has Aegis, it's like, it's a lot of risk for very little reward if they win that fight. It would have been very flashy, but other than that, it's just like, yeah, we should probably wait it out. Let our Gyrocopter get a little bit more farmed. Havos is working his way probably towards his first damage item now. He went for the BKB SMY, so he's sufficiently tanky at this point. He just needs to start hitting hard, so when he gets black off, FNG here we go. setting something up also. Funnick, Soneko has got the fish, both G and FNG out. Soneko gets himself out. Funnick might not be as lucky. Oh, the winner's curse comes through. They want him dead, and they're going to get it there. Funnick now down for a good minute. Very nice vision from Sonico, though. He did his best. I don't really think you could have asked him to do anything more in that situation. Stampede is showing to be, once again, extremely good in a lot of different situations. I wouldn't be surprised the Centaur getting a little bit more love, at least after Ooh, these finals. Oh, Illidan, he wants to fight a force. He's got a TP backup coming in the form of the Wolf. And there's going to be more as well. But now, Denny with the Dream Call, they want to try to turn this. But hey, look, the Embrace is going to be there. Illidan's going to be one. Now your Echo Sam coming through. Firebots gets taken down. Waiting wrestles. He literally can't do anything. He's going to get taken down as well. It's an unstoppable kill streak for Denny. Most popping the BKP there, because the Illidan won't be able to find the double edge, he's been glimmer caped up as well, trying to find the control onto Dendi, but Dendi's going to be fine, so good to wait in the sidelines, Illidan trying to chase down the Dendi kills, going to be the Nightmare from FNG, save this up, and now Snaker with oh. the Fisher, and now taking the Nightmare off Dendi, allowing Dendi to get himself out of this one, Dendi will be able to TP home, Snaker will be the sacrificial lamb there, but Snaker with the plays, allowing Dendi to live. This guy is an absolute legend. Like, how do you go into that just saying, you know what, man, it's fine. I got you. I'll break that nightmare. You get yourself out. Sing Tales of My Valor. Soneko, he's unbelievable. Like, I don't know what else this guy needs to do to be able to win. Pretty insane stuff. But, I mean, still, obviously, the fact that VP, they do get the kills. They do manage to take down the Earthshaker. And, you know, Shadow he's got the Scardi, so he, he's certainly going to be punching in these engagements, and it, it is still a while until Havorst has that big damage item, as you were saying, so... 
Arguably, if VP want to start to push, maybe this is the time that they can look to take a convincing fight and maybe even try and push up to the high ground. Do you feel, as a team, they're ready to wait a little bit longer before they look to jump in a Vorst? Oh, they're a bit deep here, mate. He Winter's cursed, and now the TP's coming in. A Vorst, he's got nowhere to run. He really wanted that tower. He's not going to get in there. Lil with the denying. A Vorst, I mean, that was classic, a Vorst. That's heartbreak. Classic that, stuff. That's a really not good death for him. I mean, he was just working his way towards maybe picking up a Demon Edge. He was only a couple hundred gold away. I think he lost quite a bit for that as well. Yeah, he loses almost 500 gold for that death, so he's not even able to pick up a, a random Javelin or anything. Maybe unsure of what next item he wants to really buy, but I think the biggest point of contention for both teams, definitely going to be Roshan. In that regard, I'd say that Na'Vi maybe had like a, a tiny edge just because, again, massive AoE combos. But VP uh, have been very good about positioning for the most part. There's been uh, one or two pretty decent echoes. The one bottom lane comes to mind. He hit on uh, two or three, managed to kill full boss before he was able to really do much of anything. I think that it's so important to have Aegis though. Like if you're VP, if you want to go high ground and you're going into that choke point, you need a second life on one of your carries. And I think in this case, G is the one who needs it. Indeed, it looks like VP. They're going to be happy just. Cap, rotating around, hanging around this Roche pit. It's going to be up in a bit. We're going to see what kind of timing is going to be up for Roche. And VP, I mean, they're doing exactly as you said. They want to wait for that Aegis because they really respect the team fight potential of Na'Vi. We've seen it time and time again with the Echo Slam in the epicenter. You want to be making it sure that you're ready to go if you're going to run up into the high ground against that. Now, without a doubt, it's anyone's game at this point. I got to commend Na'Vi, though. They, like, pulling these games back, I don't understand how they can consistently do that. Like, how do you have that much pressure on you to say, oh, yeah, you know what, it's fine. We'll just randomly wipe the enemy team off the map when we're down, like, five, 6,000 golden experience, and the enemy team composition is better at this stage in the game. It's just unreal. And that fight mid, like, just baiting out so many abilities and just mass blink spam mobility heroes just showing to be Na'Vi's forte. Like, this is... The only reason they're in the game is because of outplay. Like, that... That in of itself is nuts. Oh, absolutely. And the graphs kind of settled now around this zero point. So we're pretty much yeah. back to square one between the teams in terms of net worth and XP difference as well. So it's kind of like a clean, clean sheet. And it's definitely with the lineups that they've got, the potential for both teams to swing it back in their favor. I don't think, I mean, can you look at the drafts now and, and kind of say, well, this team's clearly got the edge? Or do you feel like they're fairly even at this point of the game? I feel it's very reliant on item progression from yeah. the Gyrocopter and the Shadow Fiend. So for example, SF is going for crit, right? so they're going to have very high single target damage output, even through BKB, whereas Havos, he's still working his way towards that first damage item. Now, he could opt to go for Butterfly. That would also be a very good choice if he sees the Crystalis Ooh. top lane. And you'll be forward. Phobos is going to go in there, but there's Yules to hold him back. Dendi needs to be careful because FNG is around. Then he's going to be fine. Yeah, TPs and gets four stuffed as well back just to make sure there's no hope of VP catching him out and we'll be able to escape that. Now the inherent weakness of Na'Vi's lineup is their single target damage output. That's the one thing they're going to be suffering from the most. They picked a hell of a lot of AoE though. So if they can find the combos, I think they'll be able to sufficiently take fights. But time and time again, VP have shown that they will adapt. Like they will be able to take team fights in the, in the proper method. And we're going to see a little bit of rotation here again from Na'Vi. And Illidan in the tree line here, forced on the front lines for the side, Navi and all getting forced, forced, Snake is going to have to find the fish here. Now with the burst right full up with the cold embrace, the Lil's going to be there, and now the Winter's Curse on the force. He managed to get off the BKB, the Fuse Grip gets cancelled straight away, and it's a question whether Navi can stick around in this fight, they're starting to back off, because G, with BKB doing so much damage, there's going to be the disruption there, holding back Art Star, well, himself as well, FNG's getting low, because Phoenix trying to the burst strike, will now find it, they'll find the bait, and the fight continues, G getting low, now Sudeiko with the Echo Slam, with the Fisher brings down G, it's a two for one, they want more Lil's gonna be on TPI, he's got the Glibber Cave, will escape. And it's a two for one there as Na'Vi are able to successfully defend and they kill the G Shadow Fiend. They're getting baited so hard. Like every single time, Na'Vi just completely disengage. It's like, okay, fine, you want to pop Stampede? Our Shaker and our Sand King are gonna be sitting in the back the entire time. They go on Havos, they don't even kill him when they throw the Winter's Curse on him because no one is in range to really deal damage at that point and he has his BKB up. So the only person who can really hit him is Shadow Fiend Funnick. Yeah, he's dropping low here. I think he will end up dropping. He's always going oh, to force no, strike. He's good. He's got a bow. Oh, Seneco actually coming in saying, well, I'm going to hold these guys back for you. Homie missile onto Willard and Illidan will pop the stampede. Of course, with that free puffy trying to get to the high ground, but Phoenix there with the bow strike holding him back and he'll get out. Deadly blinking forward. They're trying to find the kill. It waiting with Illidan will be glimmer up now with the corner brace from Lily's going to be okay. He will survive, but he doesn't find any of the kills there. Navi just working perfectly as a team to keep each other alive.
and VP really need to just focus one target down. Like, they wanted to kill the gyrocopter there, couldn't do it, get all of their BKBs blown, basically, at the start of the fight, and the stampede, and the egg also. So nothing really accomplished anything. Like, your BKBs, your stampede, your egg were all wasted. At that point, Navi are like, it's our go time. We still got Epi. We still got Shaker ult. We can just re-engage on this whenever we want. I really think that VP's best way of taking fights is to just drop everything on one hero. Like, you need to actually take somebody down, because otherwise, you're just gonna get kited. Ah, uh, he's gone early, then he's gonna look for the kill onto Snake. Bring him low here with the burst damage to Snake. Get himself out of this one. He's gonna use himself up buying some time. We'll find the blink, and now the four-star foul. Snake escapes. And, uh, well, VP won't find anything. Roshan is up, though, and it's a question of whether VP want to try and go for this one here. Right, Roshan is a necessity for VP. They absolutely need it at this point. If for whatever reason Navi are able to take a fight around Rosh, I would even say they might just be leading this game. Okay, they've got everything apart from the Echo Slam. Still just about 10 seconds before that one comes back online. Let's see if Navi can contest this one. It's going to be quite a slow rush until G starts punching. Funny going forward, gets the burst strike on TFNG. This is big if they can control the pain. Bane won't be able to get any of the Fiend scripts out. Snake going forward. He's got the Echo Slam now. He's still waiting to use it. Holding still plays with the yours. Where's the Echo Slam? He's going to need to try and get it. No, he's going to get himself out. In fact, now they're going to find the kill onto the Shadow Demon. Now Snake could get the Echo Slam. The Dream Call onto free. FNG fully oh there. Getting onto the high ground. G so low as well. Funny to Snake with a Double kill, Funnick with a triple kill, working together perfectly to wipe the side of VP, and now Roshan is left open. Andy, Navi I mean, do an amazing job at baiting out BKB usage during this game. Like, that is the only reason they're winning these team fights. Every single time VP pop BKB, they pop Stampede, they want to go for someone. That art style disruption onto the Shaker actually won them the fight because it allowed the Shaker to actually walk into a position to get a much better Echo than he would have otherwise. Like, if he had to panic Echo, he might have hit, like, one hero with the BKB on, and that was going to be G. But after that, he walks to the side, he hits three with the damage, two with a stun, gets two ki heroes killed straight away, and then the rest of the team fight is just fun at coming in with the epicenter and taking out G. Like, this is just insane performance from everyone on the side of Na'Vi. They're on the same page, all of their fights are perfectly coordinated, they know exactly what their game plan is. This is insane. I mean, you look at Vors now, I think that was him just picking up a complete year. That is going to be the MKB coming out for the Vors. He's going to have that ready for the next fight. Dendi, how's he doing on that uh, old side for Vice progression? Well, he's got the ultimate orb, 2.5k gold towards that as well. Now let's have a look at the side of VP. What are they looking forward to getting out? Well, they're wanting to try and find that Daedalus, of course, onto the Shadow Fiend. They're coming up to not, but coming up to the 2k on top of the Crystalis. Still a bit of time and uh, a little while until they get that one online. And so far, I mean, VP, they've got to be so careful about the fights they're taking because, I mean, as you can see on the net worth board at the moment, massive swings, and it's getting to that point again where Na'Vi are pretty much finding the lead that VP had themselves in the early game. A VP are already kind of past the point where you have your honeymoon 10 second BKB phase on G, right? So it's already at 7 seconds. It's going to be down to 5 sooner or later. And that means that Na'Vi's supports and their, their epicenter, their echo, their coil on Dendi as well, it's going to come back into full effect, basically. And even with 10 second BKBs, or 8 or 9, it's Na'Vi's been able to very adeptly kite out the draft of Virtus Pro. And I think it's very interesting that a team with Centaur is actually just getting kited every single time. Na'Vi are just... They're out playing at every single opportunity. Well, talking about the plays, Na'Vi, they're going to be looking for them here. Smoking up and making a rotation towards this bottom tier two. Maybe seeing if any kind of reaction comes from VP in an attempt to defend it. VP themselves, all around this top lane is a five man. They're going to start moving towards this. They've, maybe they feel that Havorce is on his own. They're going for the Havorce bait. You know, we've seen Havorce out on his own a numerous amount of times. Maybe VP are going to assume that Havorce is looking for the Havorce bait. He's is, on his own. This so is, they jump on this. It's so obvious, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't think they're going to go for this. Yeah. I mean, if you look at their lanes right now, no one's even farming a single thing. I think VP know better, so they're just going to go ahead and fall back. It would have been a cool thing to see if uh, VP actually fell for that one. But at the end of the day, it looks like both teams are going to fall back into some passivity. I'm just like blown away. Like the, the performance from both teams. Like VP are not really playing bad. It's just Navi are playing really damn well. Can't argue with that. And here comes the push from Navi. It's their turn to try and go on the aggressive. And let's see what VP can do in reaction. We've seen time and time again. VP have tried to push themselves, and Navi been there with the jump onto them. How good's VP's high ground defense, in your opinion? It is very, very good. Yeah. Like you have Bane, you have Winter Wyvern, you have Egg. There are a lot of tools at your disposal. I think Navi excel fighting in open map fights like this. I want to go. Lil and Phobos are smoked up. Forced on the front. They've got Funic on the high ground. Uh, who's going to make the first jump? Phobos moving forward, just chucking out the fire spirits. They've got the stampede as well if they want to try and initiate. 
with the way the fights have gone, maybe they want to hold on to that in case the fight goes bad and they need to disengage. And then just in the tree line there, looking for a jump, but at the same time, Funnick on the sidelines. Both heroes just waiting to catch someone out, and this is a very, very tense part of the game, I think. Uh, Funnick is a beast. Here comes the Burrow. He's going to find the Burrow Strike against himself. Four staffed out, dodging the Who's Not Familiar. Then the Stampy will be popped. And now the Phoenix Revolt to Enforce. But the disruption from Artstyle is going to break it. Enforce is going to be able to fight back up in there. Which is now Sadeko with the Echo Snap on FNG and Lil. And now going in and full force. The corner is going to come down on the wall. They have popped the Supernova here. Dream Calls onto them. And it's actually now V losing the fight here. They've lost the Aegis on the wall. They've lost Sadeko as well. Funnick's going to drop as well. And it's time for VP to take a positive fight. They're going to almost certainly bring down Enforce here as well. Four here dropping on the side and Na'Vi and VP proving they've still got the team fight to bring to this game. I think the big difference in that fight than everything else that we've seen so far is Na'Vi committed so many heroes at the same time. Like Funnick didn't even end up getting his epicenter off because he felt like he had to go back in, even pop the cheese, and then he just gets chased down by Phobos. So instead of it being that fight around the river where you have two heroes on high ground with Blink, they actually have both of their counter initiation heroes just committed to the fight immediately. And you're not going to be able to kite out your BKBs because by the time you get out of the fight, you're already dead. So VP actually take a very favorable engagement in the most adverse of circumstances because they I, they had Aegis up on Havos. I'm not trying to break the base here. Big Iron pickups coming out for Dendi's now got the completed scythe. BKB's finished though for Illidan. They do still have this epicenter. Well, Funny gonna go in for the Burrow Strike just onto two. Walks himself back out. Dendi, how long until he's got that Dream Call available yet again? Well, it's gonna be 16 seconds or so. And well, VP, they want to take the racks here going forward. What can Na'Vi do to stop it? There'll be the fishing coming out onto two. And he kind of follow up coming out. Doesn't look like it for the time being. And VP might be able to clear these ones out. They're going to find the range tracks in the mid lane. They're looking for the melee as well. It looks like they don't want to stick around. Now, Havorst is going to be back up in five seconds or so. So, realizing, you know, before when they've tried to break the high ground, it's not gone too great. With the full five man, Na'Vi should be able to defend. Uh, I think it's a right call to back here. I mean, Havos isn't going to buy back for a range tracks. He might not even have bought back for the melee, even if it was in danger, just because it means if you buy back to defend that, and then you die one more time, VP either get the next Roshan, or they just push another set of racks, and that's just way too much of a risk at this point. Although, wait a minute, they had two tier twos. Okay, maybe he could have bought back, but maybe he felt it was fine either way. Range racks isn't a gigantic deal no. either way. We're 44 minutes in, close to 45. You can easily deal with those creeps at this point, but... I think the most important things to note now are the fact that Illidan now has his own BKB, which is really key, because now he's not going to get bursted down by the, the huge AoE damage that's coming out from the side of Na'Vi, and most of the time, the supports, like, he's got a lot of health, right, like 2800, he's up there with uh, G in terms of overall tankiness, and speaking of, he's actually got a Daedalus now, too. I think it's going to become increasingly difficult for Na'Vi to go for outplay, and we haven't really touched on it much this game. But it just goes to show that Na'Vi are much more of a reactionary team in this draft than they are fighting on their own terms, like going for aggression. Because it just shows like when they were diving under the tier 2, they have Aegis advantage and Cheese advantage, and they dive and they lose the fight. But whenever VP are walking into them, Na'Vi always have the advantage of having their Sand King and a Shaker in a much better position to get ultis off. So VP, you might actually want to let them come to you. And VP, they're going to smoke up ahead towards the top lane. We saw at the moment, both Sineko and Dendi were hiding in the tree lines. It's actually going to be Havos teeping back to base, and it looks like, yeah, everyone's going to leave this now. They're a little bit suspicious of the absence of VP from the map, and they're going to go back to base, maybe preparing themselves for this siege that VP might look for. All ultimates are online. So if a fight kicks off, both teams are going to have everything at their, dis uh, their disposal to go with. The question if VP want to try and look for this one on the high ground here. They're not going to find anything. Na'Vi themselves, they don't... It's going to be r risky to leave the base at this point. And they're going to almost certainly just wait until VP reveal themselves. Uh, only buyback available on the side of Na'Vi right now. Actually, no, excuse me. They don't have any. But there's three buybacks on VP. Of course, they can't know that. But it's a very tense point in the game. And if they had caught anyone, really, it they would have been dead. There's nothing they can do about it. And plus, they also expended their Glyph in the last push. And I think that's also why VP wanted to smoke. Because they say, okay, there's no Glyph. If we get a pick, we immediately just turn that into a Rax, 100%. And then maybe because of that push, we can secure Roshan when it respawns. So, nice idea with the smoke. Unfortunately, they can't find anything off of it. Still, like, either team can win at this point. It's pretty insane when you get to 47 minutes and you say, it really just comes down to the fights. Like, who gets a good smoke? Who gets a pick? Who doesn't have buyback? You can't really ask for more in a game five than this situation right here. 
Absolutely not. This is as close as it could be. And Phobos, he's uh, making his way towards a pretty big item himself. He's pretty much got the money coming around the corner for that complete Shiva's guard. Just uh, about 100 or so to go before he picks up that Mystic Staff. And I mean, that's something else to enter into these team fights that's going to be a bit of an issue for the side of Na'Vi. Naker hanging around here in the trees. He's going to see them come forward and it's a question of whether Na'Vi want to try and get themselves in position to fight this. Okay, it's not going to be the case. Snaker's just going to keep himself hidden. Top lane, Darren's going to look for a bit of a push. Snaker's going to reveal himself there with the Fisher, but will TP out immediately. Just in case VP were going to look for him. And we continue this all. Danzi. Oh, Lil. Tried to get himself there. It's, it's not going to happen. Both teams even though Cell's safe and sound for the time being. You can tell, like, from the posturing of both teams, like, no one really wants to fight 5 versus 5 unless one of them uses a smoke to initiate. I guess Na'Vi would be in the advantageous position if VP were to walk into them, rather than vice versa, because, again, their team is very good at reactionary Dota, but just in general, like you were mentioning earlier, the, the Phoenix, he's going to pick up a Shiva's now. I think it's very good against Na'Vi's lineup, not because they have a lot of right-click, but because only one of them has a BKB. And that's Havost, and his BKB is already down to 6 seconds anyway. So I think you're going to be able to slow a lot, be annoying in the fights, trying to stop blinks and such. That's going to be really key. If the Shaker and the Sand King get caught out for any reason, the fight is automatically super difficult. Because even with the MKB up, if you compare the type of items that Gyrocopter has bought to the Shadow Fiend, the SF is going to win the right-click war like every single time, right? So if you take out the AoE combo from Na'Vi, it's just pretty much like, who, who hits harder? And I think it would actually be VP in that case. But again, that's... It's a very hard situation. Like, how do you find both Blink supports before anything happens? And, uh, well, the next point of contention could be the Roshan. It's going to be up in just under 30 seconds. Last time, of course, we saw Na'Vi take a very, very positive team fight for the side around the pit. VP just hanging around. They really want to find this Aegis. And either team, once they get it online, it's, it's going to be time for the push and well. FNG, he's a nice guy, he's apologizing straight away. And uh, and we are back off there. I always wonder when you have pauses that are that short, what actually happens. Maybe like his headset fell off or something. Because we can't actually, we're not facing the stage, right? So we can't actually see them. But, the old five second pause. I think vision is also very key at these points in the game, for obvious reasons. Like the later you get, you, you don't want to be blind playing in a 50 minute game, right? The both teams pretty much have an equal amount of warding and around the same areas. I guess VP's warding is a little bit more aggressive, but being able to have vision for the right initiation can be the make or break in these late game situations. Indeed. Well, Edelton, leading forward here. Then is he going to try and go for this? No, he's just going to throw the orb out. The rest of the side of VP are around. It'll be a very tricky fight for the side of Na'Vi to take in. And keep themselves safe back up and Snaker just sticking around here in the tree line. Roshan is indeed up. Was scouted out by the side of Na'Vi so they know it's available. And they'll almost certainly be prepared to fight if VP decide to go for it themselves. Neither team can give this up for free. Like, I think you actually have to fight this. VP have already showed that they have the potential to go high ground. Even though Na'Vi have tier 2s, they might be able to delay long enough to get the Aegis off of G. But you don't want to give it away for free. I think that is not the play. There are boots of travel available on Snaker. It's going to be coming in now. It's dying pretty fast, though. They I need to hurry. to get there quickly. I mean, here we go. Phobos trying to indicate the fight going on to us. Alas has able to full stop himself forward, but it was almost certainly he's going to spill. Go down. There's going to be the scythe onto Illidan. Then he's going to come up by the Winter's Curse. Will be forced off to wait. Havor still with the cooldown. Catching onto G and FNG. The question is, can they continue to fight? They've still got the Echo Slam and they've still got the Percenter. And here we go, of course, moving forward, the epicenter being channeled up, and well, Illidan's going to try and jump in, but of course, pop the BKB, the damage for G is just too much, Phoenix trying to do what he can, but the BKB is on G, and Illidan, there's not a lot that this Sand King can do, of course, will buy back, then he getting caught out here by the, well, using himself up, can he get himself out of this one, he can, he's able to blink up to the high ground, and well, Na'Vi are now, a few heroes, well, they still, got echo. They still they, have echo. Yeah, it's all about the echo here, and there it is, onto G, onto Willard, and they don't have BKB here for round two, can they bring them down, so now the Havorce moving in, into the pit, they'll find the kill of Dilladan, will they find G as well, G, he's being embraced up by Lil, he'll lift the timing of Phobos as well, healing him up, the teamwork there, keeping him alive, finally getting the power strike onto FNG, the pre down FNG, Havorce trying to do what he can against G, but G, he's cleaning up, double kill, finally they'll break down the Shadow Fiend, they might lose Funny here, Funny trying to get himself out, he will end up going, down 
Dallas and Nico still doing up and Dendi he wants to find Leo Sadeko coming forward there with the enchant totem they'll bring down the white one they might even fight Phobos funny rotating round the BKB will be popped by Phobos he wants to find the Dendi kill he's not going to get it Phobos falls as well Dendi gets the kill and VP they all hit the deck the one important thing to remember from this team fight is that a couple of heroes bought back and I'm pretty sure Hobos die back on top of that. So that's two heroes who aren't going to have buyback. They lost their gyrocopter anyway, so they can't take Roshan. They don't have the physical damage to do it. No one can tank it. So right now, VP don't have to commit any buybacks to this whatsoever. They need to deal more damage. Navi need more out of this. Snake, he's got to be careful there. He's getting low. FNG's going to chase us down with a stampede. They take down. Yeah, she can roll funny. Oh, he's got to be careful as well. And that's a dieback as well on your Earthshake. I mean, Earthshake is down for 90 seconds. Navi actually committed so much for that Roshan that I, I don't even think it was worth it. Like, they have two diebacks. They don't even get the Roshan from it. They don't force any buybacks at all from the side of BP. That's the only reason they go top. They want to force buybacks to try to equalize the situation. But in the end, that trade was not favorable for Navi at all. Funny. Uh, he's going to get caught out here as well by Illidan. Funny does have the uh, epicenter if he can get it off, but well, with FNG around, there's going to be no chance. He does simply just force stuff and blink himself away. And they've kind of got to hope that VP don't try and pressure down the mid lane because there's still 60 seconds without oh, the Oh, they're just going to go straight Roshan. They're just going to okay. run to Roshan and kill it. Like, there's nothing that Navi are going to be able to do about it. The Shaker's still dead for too long. The Shadow Fiend's already back up. And he buys boost of travel. So first priority is getting the Aegis up, making sure you get the, the cheese as well. And I think that is going to be the point where VP go down mid. Because now Navi are in a horrible spot. They have no buybacks on two of their heroes. Like, the Core has no buyback. The Shaker has no buyback. And actually, I think uh, Funic used one too, correct? Yeah, he did. Okay, so no buybacks pretty much on anyone like, except for Dendi on the side of Navi, and you're fighting into Aegis Cheese. They put so much emphasis on that Roshan fight that I think they actually overcommitted. Well, let's certainly see if that seems to be the way. They do all have the elements back up on the side of Navi, of course, for the defense. And Earthshaker will be back in 15 seconds. But as you said, in this next fight, if they lose heroes and they can't return to the, they, you know, the side of VP, they're just going to destroy the base of Navi. With the amount of damage you've got now in this shadow. They have to rat. They absolutely have to rat. They cannot fight VP. If they go down mid, 5 versus 5, Navi will not be able to win that engagement. They need to try to make VP react to them. That's why they're in the woods right now. They know that if they're just sitting in their base, they're just lambs to the slaughter. They need to try to make something else happen. I mean, it's working at the moment, forcing VP back to the top lane. VP themselves, uh, the question is, do they want to try and push? They're all heading down Bargy towards the mid lane. And maybe this is the start of the momentum swing. They still need to take these tier twos down from both of the side lanes. And maybe that's, well, that's the kind of thing that's, uh, that's pretty much the good news here for Na'Vi, meaning that VP Armory's just forced down mid. It's going to be a little bit hard if they want to just go straight for the game. And it looks like they, yeah, they're yeah, just going to hand back and, and focus maybe on the top lane to try and work towards a second set of racks eventually. Now the tier 2's being alive is actually really nice for Navi in this situation. If that bottom tier 2 had been dead, I think VP would have just immediately walked down there. It's very low on health at the moment, but no creeps actually in range to be able to take it down. So that's a godsend. If those towers are dead, I think Navi probably just would have lost the game after that. But they now have time which is the only thing that they need. They just need to be able to get one more buyback on another hero, or they need to be able to take some ridiculously strong fight inside of their base. Now, we did say that Na'Vi fight the best when VP are walking into them. All their heroes are very great reactionary heroes, so maybe they can outplay enough to be able to force VP out of their base. Okay, and for the next fight, Avorst has invested in a completed Satanic, so they're going to have that as well here on the Jara. Going to need to do something big here. G starting to pummel away at the tier 3, the TP's coming out for Na'Vi, they're ready to defend, but the question is, have they got enough to stop VP at this point? Going for Snake and finds nice the Fisher onto 2, but now a legend going in, he will get caught out by the Burrow Strike, and now with the Winter's Curse onto Snake, a holding out in place, he's going to go down, and he's down for 80 seconds, he does not have buyback, but he's getting caught out as well, the Dream Call's being dropped by Dendi, but now the Fisher of Force will get cancelled straight away with the defensive disruption from Arstar, but Arstar's going to go down, two heroes down on the side of Na'Vi, neither with buyback available, and as a three-man can Na'Vi hold back the side of VP? They're going to try their best here. Havorce, taking the missile forward onto Illidan. Now, oh, and he gets the waiting rift onto free. The missile will connect onto Illidan. Funic trying to desperately push them back here with the rat, attempting to do what he can on the bottom lane. Mid lane, the melee racks will get cleared out. And now the side of VP, they're going to look for the top set as well. And, uh, well, Na'Vi, can they do The Dream Call's being popped. They do still have an epicenter. It's going to have to be a big one. But Funic, he just wants to continue to push on this bottom lane. He wants to find something in return. Yours is going to be thrown down onto Shadow Fiend, but G standing his ground. And there's still no Funic, no reaction from Funic. He's not coming for this one. It looks like they're just going to have to end up sacking a second set of racks here. 
And Phoenix actually being forced back from the bottom lane by Bane. And yeah, this is going to be a second set of rest. We go down, or maybe not. A Vorst here with a cooldown wants to try and fight into this one. Deadly moving forward, moving back now with a stampede going onto a Vorst. A Vorst will pop the BKB. They won't catch him out here with the Hoost on. G continues to fight. A Vorst is trying to do what he can, but now Illidan going in and going ham. Catching out a Vorst. This is going to be the defensive just rushing, buying a boss sometime. He will be able to get himself out. Denny with a waiting grip now with a supernova coming out from Phobos. Denny needs to get himself out of here, and he will, do, will be able to find the blimp. The supernova goes off, and now Funnick and Snakeo, they're going in. They've got the echo snap. Oh, it's a two, and now they've brought down the shadow feet, but he's got the ages. He's gonna be there for round two. Illidan trying to find us to the up now. G coming in. He's gonna do what he can with the waiting rift onto G down the punch. He's bringing Denny low. They'll find the kill to Denny. He does have buyback. Funny with the bro strike onto Lil at G, but now G punching away at Foes. Bring him down and force him down for 95 seconds. Denny holding Shadow Feet back in with the yours. They will bring down Lil. They need to find this kill to G and they do what they can. Burrow strike on the Shadow Feet. Denny with the sides now. Can they kill the SM? The heal, the heal from Phobos. Will it be enough? No. He might drop down the punches, he does go down, Seneco will live, and Navi do defend the base, but only what's left of it, they've lost two sets of Rex, but I've got to be honest, I think Navi, the fact that they didn't lose the game there, is pretty much, that's a win, great. it's a I win, mean, not losing the game right there is definitely a win for Navi, they put themselves in a very tough situation to fight out of, again, we talked about them not having buyback, we talked about them prioritizing Roche very heavily, they still had to spend another buyback. I believe it was on Nendi during that engagement. He would think he was the only one who even had it at that point. But with that buyback, they managed to keep their base alive. Not being Megan means they're still in the game. Gyrocopter is very good at defending against creeps, and he does have Satanic on top of that. So he'll be able to keep the lungs pushed out. It's not over just yet. Now they're trying to force some buybacks here. They will. They might even be able to counter Axe, actually. Hey, they can maybe force a buyback from VP, or they just take the racks for free. I think if you're VP in this situation, yeah, you probably don't buy back. He wants to try and get himself in, but he's not going to be able to do so. Oh, that big. Yeah, epicenter. But did they see it? I don't know if they saw that. That's the thing, because if that epicenter goes off, and there's creeps there, maybe VP decide, okay, let's just try to fight it and end the game straight up. But if they didn't see the VP fail, maybe they assume it's still there. But I guess Navi is just going to play it safe anyway and back. Indeed. And Vos is going to be back up now. But still, the fact that VP didn't have to expend the buyback there is still obviously going to put them in a very favorable position. They've taken two sets of racks from the side of Na'Vi. But Na'Vi, of course, they're going to continue to fight this one out. This game is all or nothing. This is, of course, the deciding match here in the grand final. And neither team ready to back down. But Na'Vi, of course, in a... Yeah, such a mental moment. Such a flirt. Yeah. And here we go. We're, we're finally ready to get the game back, back underway. And let's see if... Uh, Navi have it in themselves to stop VP. Now, so what's the kind of gold lead looking like for the side of VP now? So it's gone back over to 7.5k. Not a huge amount an hour in, but no, just the fact, that, the fact that they've got two sets of racks, though. That's why I'm trying to emphasize the fact that yeah. even though they're down two sets of racks, the lead itself isn't really that big. It's just the racks difference. Mm -hmm. And honestly, they even opened up the bottom set of racks on the side of VP. So Navi, if they take one or two good engagements, they can very easily force some buybacks out of VP, kind of turn the tables a bit. Gyrocopter is getting to that kind of critical mass stage where he's just an absolute monster to try to take down. Although, of course, we see G, and then we say, oh, wait, he's also a monster. <laughs> he's got 6,000 gold to his name right now and a double damage. But oh, wow. Unfortunately, no, uh, no Roshan going to be spying to be able to use that. I mean, for the side of Na'Vi now, is it just a case of waiting for VP to push again, or, or can they afford to go out the base and look to smoke up onto VP? If you're VP, I think you wait for Roshan, and okay. if you're Na'Vi... I think you have to fight Roshan again, but it seems really difficult. Having the best case scenario for Navi, I guess, would be VP trying to push in to your base before Roshan even spawned, but I don't know if VP are going to commit to that kind of an engagement. They might go for the tier 2 bottom, and they might just wait out Roshan for the safety and just saying, okay, we can get another cheese, we can get another Aegis, and then even if Navi had buyback, we might still be able to take the engagement going high ground. So, I mean, it's it's really nice for Navi that this tier 2 is here, because it gives a buffer. Instead of VP just being able to poke the base, there's actually a little bit more wiggle room between the time that VP are going to be able to get that tower and actually go high ground. Indeed, I mean, G himself, what does he go for as the final item here? I imagine I was going to save up for the fact that he wants buyback as well, but he can what get, can he 6 slot instead of us? He can get, like, AC, he can get Butterfly. Uh, there is already an MKB up on Havol, so maybe he wants to go for AC. Maybe he even just goes Moonshards. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah. 
And there's indeed going to be those moon shards on its way out and well completed straight away. And I mean, he's looking absolutely terrifying. This His game. damage output is yeah. unparalleled in this game. He by far does the most amount of physical DPS, even in comparison to the gyro, just because he has crit and a massive amount of attack speed right now. But the gyro, again, he still hits pretty hard, does damage to pretty much the entire team, as long as you get that fly cannon going. And DP, they do not want to wait anymore. Indeed, they want to go smoked up. Art style. He's getting a little bit far up, but they don't have any vision here, VP, so they don't know exactly what's happening. Art style's actually going to get a Glimmer up. Hasn't dispelled the smoke, though. VP is still in position to try and make a jump. Art style, you don't want to be revealing himself here. Oh, no, they still don't yes. quite want to jump for that one. I mean, understandably, at this point, both teams being very, very selective about the fights that they've taken, and VP feeling that that was not the one for them. There's a lot on the line. Yeah. I mean, you've got to be selective in taking your team fights when you're in the fifth game of a grand final and you can wait another, like, two minutes for Roshan to spawn. I mean, the enemy team is going to have their groups pushing in constantly. You've double racks them already. You've got the tier two off the map finally, so as soon as you get that last Aegis and Cheese, you can really start to try and just straight up end the game. And of course, Na'Vi, they've bought themselves an ample amount of time for buybacks to be available on almost everyone. I guess um, Dendi's will probably be up in terms of timer, and I think he has the gold for it, whereas Funic actually just needs a tiny bit of gold. So Artstyle is probably the one who's not going to have it. But I also think that to a degree, his hero is kind of the least important right now. Kind of... Not because any other reason that it's 63, 63 minutes in and it's a Shadow Demon. Like, a defensive disruption and a purge is pretty much all he's throwing in. Indeed, and it's swap. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few more minutes of passivity as... Art Style is going to walk into Phobos here. Now, can they follow this okay. one up? Yeah, Danny coming forward. They want to try and find kill, but Phobos is able to get the BKB off. And does Icarus dive away there? Now, that Glimmer was on point as well from Lil. He just saw that and he was like, Dear God, please don't die. I thought for a second they might even commit coil to that, but I guess he would be able to just egg. Because if you coil mid-dive, you still get stunned for four and a half seconds, and that might have been enough to be able to kill him. Although I don't know if they know Roshan's not up yet. It's very soon. Okay, Illidan's got an AC now. I mean, this is the point where if Na'Vi lose the fight, they're almost certainly losing the game. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of that make or break, right? You take the one good team fight and you... Illidan? We want to go forward here. Art Star will be able to turn around and throw down the Demonic Purge. Homing Missile on its way towards it, but again, the Glimmer Cape. Going to make it very hard for Navi to do anything else there. And what it's going to do is force CP back. Roshan is very nearly up. And, and they are this just camping this. It's going to be arguably <laughs> kind of the most important Rosh of the entire Dream League season three. I'm looking at Navi right now and I'm thinking to myself, if I can test this, and I lose a lot of heroes and I'm forced to buy back a lot. Doesn't that just auto lose me the game? Is it actually better to just fight in base? Here we go, though. Oh, again, they're going to keep on heart style. He's going to be fine. He's going to be okay. Now, Vosi's got a lot of money. He has got a lot of dollar. We, should, we might even be seeing the rapier status coming out soon for a Vos if he feels necessary. And if he can get there, if there was a game to buy a rapier in, it, I feel like it would be this one. He could actually go at uh, Butterfly. Because there's no MKB up on the side of Virtus Pro at all. And the Butterfly gives you a ton of survivability. I think he actually just wants to be that frontline hero. And he still does a good amount of damage. It's not like he's not hitting hard enough. It's just that maybe in some of these situations, he's just unable to live due to the physical DPS of G and this Roshan. It's going to get scouted out now by the Orb. Um, do you feel Na'Vi have to contest this? Or maybe I think it's actually safer to this? not contest. Yeah. Because here's the scenario, right? You fight over Roshan. And say, for instance, VP win the fight, like, they're gonna secure this 100% now because they packed. But if they get Roshan and they win the fight, then you are in a horrible position because you need buybacks to be able to defend. Like, you want to be on yes. the high ground with all yeah. five heroes alive and then be able to buy back and get right back into the fight. If you're fighting around Roshan, you can't do that. And for whatever reason, if the fight doesn't go your way, it is a guaranteed game-losing fight. But now, Na'Vi have given themselves an opportunity to fight around the base with a, a lot of buybacks. Everyone's got it. Yeah. Apart from uh, Everyone the Everyone but art style has it. So that means that you're fighting basically nine heroes. And I think that, odds-wise, gives you a better chance of winning the up, uh, uphill team fight. And this is also kind of in conjunction with what we were saying earlier, and that Na'Vi function better when VP are fighting into them. So I think it also gives them a bit more leeway in how they can engage into itself. Look at this, Avorst and Denny feeling very confident, pushing out the mid in the top lane. They're going to need to come back here because he isn't going forward. They need to try and seize the high ground here, VP. And yeah, they will come back the side of Na'Vi. Fisher just getting thrown out, trying to stop the push. 
making VP think twice before they go to the high ground. And smoke up from the side of Na'Vi as well. Maybe see if they can get themselves in position to fight this one. Ooh. Looking for the full stuff there, pu pulling Illidan up to the high ground. It's not going to be there. That would have been pretty big. If they could have chained the stuns on him, that's the important part. I mean, that guy's got 3,500 health and 33 armor. He is an absolute beast. I don't even know if they could have killed him in that stun. Maybe with a soul catcher. It's incredibly tense here. VP. It's being very careful about when they choose to go. Na'Vi, they're ready. They're waiting. They're ready for VP to overextend, but at this point... Na'Vi pretty much going to have to hit everything perfectly to bring down these here. I mean, they're just so damn tanky on the side of VP. Well, don't underestimate the power of a late game gyrocopter. He is going back in for that chrysalis. Not going to go well on the rapier, but he doesn't Ooh, have it. Oh, he wants to go in out here to stampede the Hoostom. BKBs are being put up with the defensive dispersion by sometimes to make a supernova coming out for the side of VP. A false positive BKB trying to go up against Illidan. No one dying as of yet. The side of Navi getting low now with the supernova stone catching out of force. A force getting low gets himself forced up back, but Illidan in with the storm will fight through. Double kill for your central warrior. Now, a force will fight back. Arsenal will not be able to return to his break. Deadly coming forward with a feeding grave onto Lil and FNG. Now, force trying to do what he can with a flat cannon, but G, he's just a superior amount of damage and he'll just force the force to back right up. The homing missile will fly forward onto Willis and will connect now with the Fisher onto FNG and G. A force still trying to do what he can, but G now has been glimmer caved up. Now turn attention to the tier three and now onto the racks as well. Denny, what can he do? Well, he's going to back himself up as the Arctic burn flies through for the winter wyvern. G is looking to make a creep to FNG, trying to find a nightmare, but he won't find it now. Illidan fights the double to Seneco. Seneco's going to get pulled down. He does have buyback. They still have Epstein. They still have Echo Snap, but now they've lost Dendi. Dendi will buy back for this one. Bow strike onto two. There's your Echo Snap for Seneco. Go. They'll find the Fisher as well. They break down the Aegis on the Shadow Fiend. Lil will drop as well. Can they kill the SSF for second time round? G, he's got the BKB here for round two. Illidan will get that made up. But look at the right clicks here for G. It's too much. Her force has now died back. They won't even kill Illidan. It's a double kill for G. Make that more triple Good kill. Game. GG has been called and VP are your Dream League Season 3 champions. I honestly can't think of a better way for this series to end. You yep. can tell how happy VP are right now. Very well deserved Grand Finals. They take two games against Na'Vi. Looked like Na'Vi were starting to fight back. They had really good drafts in game number three and four. They bring it to a fifth game. They fought tooth and nail for this victory. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what to say.